Good afternoon, everyone, and apologies for this slight delay, for this slight delay uh, with the press conference that follows uh, the meeting of Stabilization and Association Council between uh, the European Union and the Republic of North Macedonia that just uh, concluded. High Representative Vice President Federica Mogherini, Prime Minister of North Macedonia Zoran Zaev, and Commissioner Johannes Hahn will all say a few words, and then we'll take a couple of questions. High Representative, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. It is a, a pleasure uh, to welcome again uh, my uh, dear friend uh, uh, Zoran uh, and to welcome for the first time uh, here as the Prime Minister of the Republic of North Macedonia. Uh, and it is a pleasure to welcome you together uh, with the um, Prime Deputy Prime Ministers uh, uh, Buya Radmila Sakeniska, as well as Foreign Minister uh, Nikola Dimitrov. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you uh, back uh, uh, in Brussels. Um, we had uh, uh, the 15th uh, Stabilization and Association Council, uh, a very uh, positive one, um, where uh, we were extremely glad to see uh, that uh, the determination, the vision, the energy uh, of uh, the Prime Minister and uh, his government, his team, remains as strong as ever. Uh, and let me add, uh, this is really an inspiration for all of us. Opening accession negotiations this year is and remains the strategic objective, uh, not only of the government, uh, but of the entire country. And let me say, uh, we confirmed on our side our determination to support uh, all political forces of North Macedonia in reaching this goal, which is a shared one. A shared uh, uh, in national terms and a shared in European terms. The meeting today gave us the opportunity to discuss the uh, numerous achievements uh, that the country has uh, um, managed to uh, get. Uh, first of all, on uh, relations with uh, uh, the neighboring countries. Uh, and let me clearly mention uh, the historic uh, FRESPA agreement uh, uh, between uh, North Macedonia and Greece. Uh, thanks to uh, your personal leadership, the determination of the foreign ministers, uh, and also let me recognize here the um, leadership of Prime Minister uh, Tsipras, uh, but also uh, the uh, historic agreement uh, with uh, Bulgaria uh, that managed to solve uh, uh, issues that were there uh, since a long time and uh, put your country uh, in a, a position of good neighborly relations uh, uh, with, uh, with all uh, in the region. And... Um, this uh, uh, first and foremost uh, opens uh, new perspectives uh, for, new for North Macedonia and sends a very powerful message uh, in the region and uh, beyond. We are aware that this complex uh, process absorbed political energy and we've been proud to accompany you every single step of uh, the way. Uh, we uh, have done it, uh, Commissioner Hahn and myself, including with our presence uh, at the signature. Uh, of the agreement uh, in, uh, in PRESPA, uh, but you have made it. Um, and um, you have also reminded uh, us that it is possible to uh, achieve historic results uh, in terms of relations with your neighbors and remain focused on uh, the EU uh, integration agenda and the reform agenda um, in the meantime. Uh, doing the two things at the same time has been quite remarkable and I believe you have managed to show everybody that uh, um, this is uh, indeed possible. Um, I am impressed by the reform dynamic that exists in the country. Uh, a number of key texts have been adopted, such as the law on the prevention of corruption and conflict of interest, or the law on prevention and uh, protection against discrimination. Others, uh, we have been told, will reach the parliamentary debate stage very soon. Uh, but uh, we have also seen uh, uh, awareness uh, in, uh, in the government, in yourself, that change is not just adopting new laws. It is first and foremost uh, about the, I would say, institutional approach that the government takes. Uh, the government has demonstrated that it is uh, genuinely concerned about the quality and the sustainability of reforms, uh, in particular ahead of parliamentary debates, Wide consultations have been taking place, 
with parliamentary political parties, which is something we particularly encourage and support, but also with civil society, with ourselves, with the European Union, and with the Venice Commission. And I'm convinced that North Macedonia can and will sustain this work also in the coming weeks, months, and years. Uh, we will, on our side, continue to give our full support uh, to accompany this uh, process uh, with all our uh, strength and with all our tools. This will require all political forces in the country to work jointly and constructively on the reform agenda. The inclusive approach remains essential and wide consultations should obviously continue. We also expect uh, the opposition to act, act constructively and we trust that they will demonstrate sense of responsibility, capacity to overcome divergences so that uh, the country as a whole uh, can uh, um, meet uh, the citizens' expectations on uh, the European Union integration process. All the country's parliamentary parties, whether in government or opposition, have a responsibility towards their citizens, and we believe they need to work within the institutional uh, framework of the country itself. This is a message I passed several times in the past, no matter who was in government or opposition, uh, and uh, uh, this is one of the key elements of uh, uh, good and strong cooperation with the European Union institutions that uh, any kind of political divergence uh, ex is expressed within the proper institutional uh, framework of the country. This uh, entails a responsibility for the government to provide uh, an open and functional uh, institutional framework, and obviously it entails a responsibility from the opposition to engage uh, inside the institutions uh, in uh, a political uh, competition and debate. Presidential elections will take place very soon, it is important, uh, uh, an important moment. Uh, it is uh, uh, not an obstacle on the way uh, to reforms, but it is uh, rather an opportunity for democratic debate about the present and the future of the country. And it is important that these elections are well administered, uh, that uh, political competition happens within the institutional framework uh, that the elections provide, and obviously we will be looking forward to the monitoring and to the final assessment of the ODIR observation uh, mission. We also discussed uh, uh, at length uh, today, as uh, always, the role of the country in the region and in Europe. We expressed our appreciation for the consistent increase in alignment with the European Union common and security policy. Um, our uh, defence cooperation is also very good and will continue to be strengthened. Uh, as North Macedonia wants to further contribute to European Union peace-building work. We will uh, move forward also on this file. So, uh, dear Prime Minister, uh, dear friends, um, your government has managed to deal with uh, many priorities at the same time, and some of them very challenging and difficult ones. Uh, good relations with your neighbours, rule of law reforms, the NATO accession process, security, inter-ethnic relations, and the preparation for elections, and it is uh, impressive how you manage to uh, continue to focus on all these different tracks in parallel with important achievements in all of them. We will accompany you in keeping up a strong pace so that all this work can uh, bring uh, further results in the coming months. Um, I have uh, confidence that with continued reform uh, progress, North Macedonia and its citizens will move forward on the European Union accession path. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prime Minister Zaev. Почитава на подпредседателке на Европската комисија и висока представничка на Европската унија за надворешна политика и безбедност, мадам Могерини. Почитуван комесар за проширување и соседска политика, господине Хан. Почитуван амбасадоре, почитувани пријатели присутни, почитувани представници на медиумите. Секогаш е убаво и убаво се чувствуваме во Брисел, во средиштето на Европската унија, наскоро нашиот втор дом меѓу нашите пријатели и партнери од Европското семејство. Тоа се исклучителни настани и можности за да се провериме себе си за напредокот на нашата земја во европските интеграции и да ги слушнеме препораките и охрабрувањата. Денеска го одржавме 15-ти од состанок на Советот за стабилизација и асоцијација меѓу Република Северна Македонија и Европската Унија во исклучително важен и историски период за нашата земја. 
Заеднички е констатиран и поздравен континуиран напредок во сите клучни реформски области. Посебно беше поздравен на предокот на планот на унапредување на односите со сите соседи, со особен акцент на договорот од Преспа со Република Грција. Заедно со договорот со Република Бугарија, поставен е силен пример за другите земји од регионот и пошироко како да се зајакнат добрососедските односи. Одлечена беше важноста за континуирано спроведување на овие договори. Тоа е наша одговорност на која сме целосно посветени во овој период. Спогодбата за стабилизација и асоцијација останува да биде во фокусот на односите меѓу, Маке... меѓу Република Северна Македонија и Европската Унија, се до пристапување на земјата во Европската Унија. Оваа година успеваме да направиме видлив напредок во исполнувањето на стратешките цели на државата, членството во НАТО и во Европската Унија. Нашето членство во НАТО е сосема известно, а реално и нашето очекување за донесување на одлуката во Европскиот Совет во јуни 2019 година за почеток на пристапните преговори со Европската Унија. Република Северна Македонија, паралелно со големата посветеност на решавање на отворените билатерални прашања, во континуитет ги спроведуваше реформските процеси во земјата. Особено внимание посветивме на реформите во клучните области правосудство, реформа во разузнавачките и безбедносните служби, борба против корупцијата и реформата на јавната администрација. Во периодот пред нас ке работиме уште повеќе и уште подобро, заедно со опозицијата и сите пратеници во собранијето на Република Северна Македонија за остварување на сите преостанати задачи кои може да имаат влијание во одлуките во јуни но и за подобрување секако на животот на нашите граѓани. Отварањето на пристапните преговори останува примарна цел на Република Северна Македонија. Уверени сме дека имаме силни аргументи кои ќе има возможат на земјите членки на Европската Унија да донесат одлука за отварање на преговори во јуни, врз основа на препораката на Европската комисија, за која се надевам ќе биде позитивна и оваа година. Изразуваме задоволство од интересот на Европската Унија за задржување на фокусот кон регионот и неговата европска перспектива и апелираме да се земат предвид околностите и важноста со одветно да се продолжи, продолжи со вреднување на постигнатото. Европските институции можат и понатаму да сметаат на Република Северна Македонија како на доверлив и веродостоен партнер во вградувањето на европските демократски вредности во целиот регион, која потврдува својата стратешка ориентација, колку што може побргу да стане интегриран дел од Европската Унија. Во нашата земја, Република Северна Македонија, реформите дават резултат и билатералните договори со Грција и Бугарија дават резултат. Економските параметри ги кршат сите рекорди, бројот на странски инвестиции е двојно поголем од било која предходна година до сега, се намалува невработеността, раст индустријското производство и извозот и истовремено се профилираме како земја која што преку билатералните договори и успешните реформи на вистина во пракса покажува дека е вредно низ диалог да се постигнуват договори со своите соседи, но истовремено низ реформите да се биде доволно атрактивен за домашните и за странските инвестиции. Така да денеска имам чест да го споделам ова задоволство на овој 15 Совет за стабилизација и асоцијација, за која што имав исклучителна чест да бидам ко-председавач со подпредседателката Мадам Могерини. Благодарам. Thank you very much. Last but not least, Commissioner Han. Yeah, thank you very much. I uh, also can confirm that it was an excellent meeting, um, like almost uh, always. Uh, and I really would like to congratulate you for all the achievements you have uh, made and it's a uh, it's really a promise for the future for the forthcoming month uh, and uh, may i say north macedonia has gone indeed from a state of crisis uh, to a beacon of hope and stability of the entire region and i had the pleasure i have to admit it was not always a pleasure but in in general in the long run up it it, it was a pleasure what we what you have achieved and uh, it was an honor to we accompany you and, and the country and your citizens on this way and uh, we will do so in the future. There is no doubt about 
and I think I can speak on behalf of the High Representative. Uh, no matter what we are doing next year, we will always be very much committed and dedicated uh, not only to the region but to the country in particular. Uh, because you have really um, uh, reached an historic agreement with Greece, which is in, in a way unprecedented and uh, is a decisive step forward, and it's including the agreement with Bulgaria, an excellent uh, showcase, uh, not only for the region, but for many other uh, protracted conflicts in the world, may I say so. And I hope this will be rewarded by the international community, not only by the European Union one. And, um, but for the moment, it's important uh, to, to continue to stay, so to say, energetic, dynamic, as it was the case, is the case, and I'm sure it will be, because our joint goal is uh, to get green light in June for opening uh, accession negotiations and for getting this. Once again, I have to, to uh, recall and to um, address everybody in the country that this can only be achieved if it's a cross-party national-wide uh, goal, and this includes, may I say already today, uh, the participation to the elections, to any kind of elections, presidential elections are the next one, of each and everybody. Each party should do its best to show democratic maturity. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, to have uh, political, so to say, fights, negotiations, discussions, however you call it. But if it's about this national goal, I think there is uh, an obligation, a responsibility to, by everybody to contribute to it and not uh, to endanger it uh, maybe in the very last moment. So that's why it is so decisive and uh, I, I wanted to, to say this in this, uh, at this opportunity. Uh, when it comes to very concrete reforms, which have still to be done because our report will be published uh, um, so to say in late spring, the focus has to be on judiciary, the fight against corruption, organized crime, the intelligence services, public administrations. We have heard today a lot about the progress, so I'm very confident. Uh, but um, um, nevertheless, uh, I have to encourage you to continue not to, to, so to say, to slow down all these efforts. Um, changes in the legislation are a positive step, a necessary one, but we want to see also a lasting change of mentality and behavior. This is what is so to say, even more important in terms of uh, uh, having a successful process uh, with the membership to the union at the end. Um, all this is true for the majority, but again, also for the opposition. In that respect, again, judges should be free to decide independently in accordance with the law and um, evidence. Not only must justice be done, it must also be seen to be done. Uh, this is so important also for citizens to, to gain, to regain trust and confidence uh, in the quality and independence of the judiciary. There should be and there has to be zero tolerance vis-a-vis -vis corruption at all levels and each and every single appointment in public ad administration should be based on merit. So I count also on the civil society, media and independent bodies to play their role in holding the authorities accountable in a constructive manner. We will continue to pursue our very strong engagement to accompany you in your reform efforts to turn the European Union perspective into reality. And um, again, it's important uh, to show strong dedications by each and everybody in the country, uh, may I say, for the last miles uh, ahead of uh, June. If uh, the impressive initiatives for reconciliations are continued to be accompanied by serious reform efforts, I am very confident uh, and we could see it, uh, may I say, without disclosing any particular secrets, uh, after yesterday's uh, meeting with uh, a lot of uh, European Union foreign ministers, uh, that there uh, is a strong support uh, uh, to um, North Macedonia and its European perspective. And uh, I'm, I'm today very much uh, uh, convinced that it will be a very successful first half year and there might follow many other very successful uh, further half years in due course uh, in the next uh, couple of years. So once again, I wish you all the best and together we are definitely successful. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. We have a time for a couple of questions. Uh, please introduce yourself and the media you're working for before you ask them. I'll start with Tanya. Thank you, Tanya Milevska, Macedonia News Agency. Uh, I have two questions uh, for uh, Mrs. Mogherini and Mr. Han. Uh, the first one uh, regarding a possible start of negotiations in June. Uh, there are very strong signals from France for the moment that it will be a clear no again in June. So I would like to know what is your position and do you, what do you plan to do to convince France if there is, if the enlargement is on the agenda in June at the General Affairs Council? Uh, maybe you can confirm whether it will be on the agenda or not, given the short time frame with the Commission's report. And my second question is about the special prosecutor. Uh, the opposition in, Macedo in North Macedonia insists on changing uh, the head of the special prosecution, Mrs. Uh, Katica Yaneva. Uh, would this be uh, acceptable to the European Union to change, uh, to change her? Thank you. W what to change? The prosecutor. Uh, the, the person. Yaneva, yes. I can start uh, and I'll be uh, very brief um, on uh, uh, the first part of the question. Um, as Commissioner Hahn has said, uh, our joint objective uh, is to have a green light in June uh, to start uh, negotiations. Obviously, uh, this is a merit-based process. The Commission will issue a report uh, later in spring. Um, and on that basis, uh, on the basis of the uh, Commission uh, opinion and report, we will uh, work with the Council. Um, I would say that this is what I say as a Vice President of the Commission uh, on, uh, uh, on my, in my capacity as a High Representative, I can tell you, uh, I would never uh, mention one member state rather than another. Uh, it is a decision that uh, um, the Council needs to take. Uh, work uh, uh, so far, uh, as Commissioner Han mentioned, uh, uh, has gone well with uh, the Council, uh, with our Member States, uh, that have seen uh, after the indications uh, that the Council uh, put forward last uh, year in June, progress. Uh, as I said, not only uh, on uh, uh, the PRESPA agreement, uh, that the Council welcomed uh, already last year because it was just signed uh, when the Council uh, met. Uh, if I don't remember wrong, the Council met one week after the signature that took place the 17th of June, that I remember well, because it was the day after my birthday, <laughs> and so it was my birthday present. Uh, but uh, the Council back then already welcomed uh, the agreement, and even more so, uh, I would expect the Council to welcome this major step forward uh, that was done uh, by um, North Macedonia together with uh, Greece. Uh, but most importantly, uh, I think the Council will have good material uh, on which to take a positive decision when it comes to the reform agenda, the implementation of the reform agenda. Obviously, the government and the opposition that can do its part uh, still have uh, some months uh, to engage positively on delivering more. Uh, being it uh, on uh, uh, the reform agenda, being it, uh, as Commissioner Han also mentioned, on uh, um, full uh, uh, participation to the democratic institutional processes that are uh, coming up uh, in the next months and that I am sure will also be looked at by our member states as a, a sign of, uh, um, I would say, stability and normalcy. Uh, of the democracy in the country. So here again, I would like to um, fully subscribe to what Commissioner Han has mentioned, uh, uh, an appeal uh, to all uh, to use the democratic means that are there in the country uh, from an institutional perspective and make sure that uh, uh, there is a full contribution uh, by all uh, on the reform agenda uh, that has been clearly set up uh, last June uh, and before, uh, long before. Uh, for uh, the European Union integration of the country and uh, um, obviously uh, for the normal um, holding, uh, regular uh, holding of the presidential elections. Commission? Only a, sh a short sentence on the first issue. We know our homework and as we are diligent people, we intend to deliver. Um, on, the, on the second, um, I don't comment on, on, on personal decisions. This has to be taken uh, inside the country, and this is part, so to say, of the whole process. Uh, 
but it's good to 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 take note that uh, um, the the special um, uh, the law related to the special prosecutor office um, is now in the parliament uh, for a kind of revision uh, and so on. And I suppose and I hope and uh, I, I was reassured that there will be a proper uh, legislative uh, procedure, and this is what counts, which is also part of our general assessment about the progress the country has made. Athanasios. Athanasios with CNA. Uh, two short questions, please. Uh, could you give us a percentage on the merit-based approach? Uh, let's say, how, how close are we to the actual factual completion of the, uh, uh, of the criteria such as the rule of law and uh, the independence uh, of the uh, justice system? 50%, 60%, 70% factually right now on the 19th of March. And second, why would the government uh, pay the price of the actions of uh, an irresponsible uh, opposition if they choose not to participate, not to collaborate uh, in a European manner in the upcoming presidential elections? I, that is a part I don't understand, Commissioner. Thanks. About the second, um, I think we need to report uh, step by step about the necessary progress, and this is why we will uh, publish our report uh, um, um, in late May, and uh, then we will have uh, the final assessment. And as we are just in, in preparing this, I can't make any, uh, so to say, uh, comments and statements on this, uh, and in particular not about a certain percentage. Second. Uh, First, uh, it's, it's simply that uh, I, I um, so to say, ask uh, and I, I, I push and, and, and promote that uh, everybody should be clear about um, his or her responsibility if it's about a national goal. And the final assessment of a country will be taken by many elements. Uh, the task of the Commission is uh, to have uh, a so-called technical assessment because there are a lot of uh, criteria, benchmarks, which have been agreed uh, unanimously amongst member states in order to make uh, the next step. And uh, our understanding is if uh, a country, not only North Macedonia, but others are delivering on what has been asked for uh, by us based on, an, uh, on a unanimous decision, we expect and our, our partners can expect, rightly so, that we deliver, and this is uh, what is our goal. But you know, there's always um, a final, if you like, political assessment. And in that respect, it's good if a country, its uh, key players, its uh, political leaders, give, uh, so to say, uh, a clear, a clear um, impression that uh, the overarching goal of this country is the European accession. Mr. Kanat, on this. Um, because I remember very well I delivered uh, a message uh, on this. Uh, uh, I think it was during my last visit uh, to Skopje uh, in the Parliament. Um, there are issues that are uh, subject to the um, uh, most... Uh, um, I cannot say violent because this uh, uh, recalls different kinds of uh, dynamics, but uh, the fiercest uh, exchanges and confrontation among political forces. And then there are some other issues on which the decision um, and the steps forward are not linked to a political judgment for one political party or the other, but are uh, the stated national objective of a country and its citizens, uh, and since long ago. Uh, since uh, um, much longer than this government was in place. And that constitutes, as long as we understand, the common objective of the people and of all political parties in North Macedonia. And on that, there will not be any kind, and I'm sure about that, any kind of uh, uh, political assessment uh, to be given to the government or the opposition or a political party or another. It will simply be a decision for the country. And that will be the moment when uh, different political parties and different institutions, including the opposition, which is part of the democratic institutional life, uh, will be called to do its part to achieve a national objective. Uh, that is part of the game. Uh, so, uh, as I said last time I visited Skopje in Parliament, 
achieving the opening of the negotiations uh, will be, inshallah, hopefully we'll get there, uh, a result for the entire country, not for the government or for the opposition, for one political party or the other, but for all the citizens of the country. And everybody should be um, in a condition and a situation to contribute to it and to take its fair part of uh, merit and responsibility uh, in the moment when the country will get there. I hope that was... Erisa. Erisa Zukai, uh, Clan TV, ABC News and Clan Macedonia. A question to both High Rep and uh, Commissioner Hahn. EU is facing heavy criticism right now uh, from the civil society, academia, media and opposition in several countries of the Western Balkans for tolerating rule of law and democracy backsliding for the sake of keeping stability in the region. There are several protests uh, from the opposition and citizens in uh, Albania, uh, Serbia, Montenegro against corrupt governments which are also violating uh, fundamental rights. Are you uh, concerned about that? And to the Prime Minister Zayev, how long did you take to raise awareness about the gravity in your country when you were in the opposition? Thank you very much. We are normally accused of being too strict on uh, rule of law, anti-corruption, uh, human rights, the space for civil society. And if you look around, not only in the Western Balkans, but uh, in our broader region and in the world, uh, I wonder if there is anybody else in the world that does as much as the European Union does to protect and promote rule of law, human rights, and space for civil society, including human rights activists. So no, I'm not concerned about uh, this. Uh, those that are uh, ensuring and guaranteeing that uh, there is uh, a special focus on uh, uh, anti-corruption, rule of law, and a proper space uh, for uh, civil society uh, in all countries uh, in the world, and in particular in our region, that's the European Union. So we have definitely uh, nothing to uh, be accused of in this field. On the contrary, most frequently, Commissioner and I are accused uh, on the name of the European Union of being too strict on this principle and values, and by the way, of uh, being the only one left in the world being so strict on these values and principles. We do it not just because uh, we believe in these values and principles, but also because we know that the only way to make uh, a society and institutions stable uh, is to invest in the full participation of civil society and in full um, appliance of the rule of law uh, principles and rules. Um, so I think we have uh, uh, quite some credibility and consistency on this file. Well, nothing to add. <laughs> Prime Minister, please. Благодарам на прашањето. Веројатно требаше неколку години да пред се го храбриме нашиот народ, но и пријателите од земјите членки на Европската унија, како и самата Европска унија, низ многу трпение, низ демократски процеси, за да пополека успееме да ја враќаме земјата на нормалниот пат. Она што е многу важно, да и дури во тоа време, Секогаш се залагавме за напредокот на нашата земја кон Европската унија и НАТО. И верувам дека тоа треба на секаде и во регионот да се случува, заради тоа што, како што рече и високата представничка Могерини и комесарот Хан, оврска и на власта, но и на опозицијата е да учествува во давањето на придонес за севкупниот напредок на квалитетот на живот во земјата, како и напредокот кон нашето пристапување кон членство во Европската унија и во НАТО. И верувам дека се повеќе и повеќе од Западен Балкан и генерално од Балканот ќе има позитивни пораки на европски манири и европски вредности, како што беше тоа од нашата земја, Република Северна Македонија, преко договорот со Бугарија, со договорот со Грција, но и преко реформите кои што успешно се завршуваат сега во овој период. I'll take one more question because we need to move on, Marina, over there, and then we'll conclude. Um, thank you, Maya. Uh, Marina Maksimovic, Tanya News Agency, Serbia. Uh, I have a question for Madame Mogherini and Mr. Han. Madame Mogherini, we saw last few weeks 
uh, many delegations in Belgrade and Pristina talking about the continuation of the dialogue. Uh, can you tell us you are facilitating this dialogue? Uh, is it enough to speak only with Belgrade and Pristina regarding the uh, uh, continuation of the dialogue or uh, you need to speak with the international community and what do you expect from them? And uh, Mr. Han, uh, uh, can you maybe uh, help us? Because we, we, we saw um, many um, officials talking in international community in Pristina, in US, about the possibility of a very close uh, solution of the, of the Kosovo problem. What we see, we can see the dialogue that is stuck. Is there something we cannot actually see and you can maybe help us with this? Thank you. Uh, I would uh, rather stick to the rule that uh, today we talk about North Macedonia. Uh, that deserves uh, uh, to be treated as one and not only as part of the region. It is a very important player in the region. Uh, I would only say that it is a source of inspiration for the region. And I believe that uh, in particular the PRESPA agreement, um, but also the agreement with Bulgaria, but in particular the PRESPA agreement with Greece, should show the way uh, to other leaders uh, in the region, uh, in particular on the fact that, uh, and we discussed this with, uh, with the Prime Minister, uh, with his delegation, with the Foreign Minister, that uh, um, if you're a political leader in a, a complicated country, in a complicated region, you can uh, choose to um, aim high and uh, try to achieve the best uh, for your people and your country, or you can simply um, decide that you navigate through difficult times and you wait for better times to come, knowing that um, the situation could uh, continue like this forever. Um, they choose uh, uh, the courageous uh, visionary uh, leadership uh, role uh, that uh, um, uh, delivered uh, something historic. Uh, and um, I believe this should be an inspiration for, for all. Um, I would stick to that. By the way, the international community uh, follows very closely, uh, first of all, um, the results of the um, good uh, relations with neighbours that North Macedonia has established, uh, and also the developments in the country. And uh, I was uh, uh, debriefing the UN Security Council last week on UN-EU uh, cooperation. I mentioned the PRESPA agreement uh, in that uh, occasion as well as I mentioned uh, the work we do to facilitate uh, the uh, dialogue uh, between Belgrade and Pristina. And I can tell you that uh, in the international community and in, in the Security Council, there is uh, full appreciation for the work that has been done uh, by uh, North Macedonia and Greece and uh, full expectation that this can be a source of inspiration for the rest of the region. Um, only a few words, if you allow, nevertheless, more on the general situation in some countries in the region. Um, first, I, I will do everything to defend the right <coughs> of uh, freedom of expression, of uh, the right to demonstrate, to express their uh, uh, concerns, their so say views, but I really condemn any kind of violence. This is not what we um, um, can accept, what we like to see, and this is something where we are very strict. But I have to say, sometimes I have the feeling those who are asking us, so to speak, on, on putting through rule of law are the same who believe we can enter like a military force in countries and kick out the current government and replace it by others. This is not our understanding of rule of law. Our understanding of rule of law, democracy, uh, transparency in the bands of judiciary is yes, the there could, there should, and there must be uh, political changes, but based on democratic processes, on elections, free, fair, independent, transparent. This is what we try to facilitate, to support. But to believe we are those who are acting like an arbitrator, you are good, you are bad, uh, you have to leave, you should come in, this is not our understanding. And whoever believes that this is our understanding our task is wrong. We will do everything to strengthen democracy in the region as part of our understanding that we should export stability in terms of a stronger democratic structure, not about standstill, but stronger democratic structure. 
this is our task. This takes a lot of efforts. This takes a lot of uh, uh, stamina and stubbornness, and we have shown this in today's North Macedonia. This is the way forward, but not nothing else. I'm afraid this is all we have time for. I thank all the speakers and all of you for coming.